Now it's time to create our user application that will be launched by the Secure Manager. The purpose of this part is to demonstrate how the Secure Manager is integrated in the STM32 ecosystem. We will use Kubemix to create this user application on STM32 CubeID to do the implementation. First, I would like to describe the application from a functional point of view. The purpose is a timestamp intrusion detection. We simulate an intrusion pressing the blue button of the STM32H573DK board. Associated to this event, a trace with a time and a date will be sent to our computer thanks USB VCP connection. The principle of this application is quite simple. The RTC calendar is clocked thanks LSI. The blue button is mapped on PC13, which is also RTC timestamp pin. So when we press the blue button, an ERQ is generated by RTC. Then the code will read the RTC register to get the timestamp value and will write the detect flag. In the main loop, if the detect flag is set, a trace with the timestamp is sent over the user to one. This application will be the user application that will be launched by the Secure Manager so will be located in the non-secure part of the flash. So launch STM32CubeMX and we will create our application. First, I would like to check the package installed, if it's correct or not, in the help menu. I go in manage embedded software package. I can scroll until found the H5. And please check, you have the version 1.1.1. .1 .1. And I can close. I will go in the access to MCU selector because I want to start my project from a MCU. Here I want to use STM32H573IIK3Q. As you can see, it's the one corresponding to the board. I will just click on the line and start the project. Here I've got a question mark. Do you want to have a trust zone activated? So in the context of the secure manager, yes, trust zone is activated. So we'll select with trust zone activated. The first thing to do is to go in the project manager tab. Then we will select the project name, the project location, and the tool chain. For the project name, I suggest timestamp event detection. Of course, you can select the name you want, but please avoid any space in the project name or in the project location. Regarding the project location, I will use C training STM 32 H5 security workshop hands on and I would like to use stm 32 cube ID. Then I will specify that this project is only for my user application will take part in the non-secure. So I will not generate the secure project part. So I untick secure project. I say, okay, all the non-secure code will be generated, but secure code won't be generated, which is what I would like to do. On this is done, important things to do now is to save the project. You have to do this to have the capability to select the correct boot path, which is a new functionality with Cubemix. So if I go in the boot path and debug authentication, here you can see first the debug authentication, please tick on generate GA folder. This will allow the project to be generated with all the script that will be needed in the future usage to reopen the debugging link when it's needed. For the boot path selection, click on select. And now we are selected the configuration with corresponding to the secure manager. In fact, we've got a first stage bootloader. So I just clicking on next. And then a second stage bootloader, just clicking on next. And finally, secure manager, non-secure application. In fact, we have no choice here regarding the configuration we've got, but in the future, maybe we will have some modification. So here, just click on finish. Here you've got a sum up of the configuration, the boot path image. You can see that the linker script will be updated to align with the configuration of the secure manager. We'll sign and encrypt binaries each time we will generate them. 
and we've got here the mapping for our address. I would like to remind you the Secure Manager boot chain. In this context, we have two stage bootloader. First, the STI ROT, I stand for Immutable, which is a ROM secure bootloader with firmware update capabilities. And we've got a second stage bootloader named STU ROT, U stand for Updatable. This means we have the capability to update the second stage bootloader, but also the secure manager, the secure module, and the application if needed. And all those updates will be done in a secure way. What is the boot process? After the reset, the first stage bootloader, SGI ROT, will check authenticity and integrity of the second stage bootloader, named STU ROT. If this is OK, it will launch the STU ROT. Then the STU ROT will check integrity and authenticity of the Secure Manager core, the services, and the modules. Then it will check also integrity and authenticity of the user application. If everything is OK, then it will launch the Secure Manager core. This one will initialize and then jump to the user application. The boot pass selection has been integrated in STM32 CubeMX. This allows to generate a project with all the material needed. I mean the Secure Manager binaries and associated script to install it. But it also installs all the script and resources needed to handle the debug authentication. It will also adapt the linker script of the application to fit the memory map associated with the boot path selected. As the configuration of the boot path is done, now we can, I would say, create our application or configure it. First, I go in the clock configuration and I want to change the speed to 250 MHz. So I just click on edge clock, change 250 and just press enter. Then you have a pop-up which asks you if you want to use another source. Just click on OK and wait that the clock configuration find how to achieve such a speed. Once this is done, then I go in a pinout and configuration tab. First thing, I would like to initialize my user that will be used to send traces. So I go in the category connectivity. I scroll down to find UART1. On here, I will select the context of execution. All our application is in non-secure context, so for sure, I assign UART1 to non-secure world. Then I will modify the mode to say it's asynchronous. And this setup, by default, select the pin PB6 and PB7, which is not the one that is on my board. I need to remap those GPIO. To do so, I will just press the control button of my keyboard and then I can click on the pin. As you can see, there is some blinking for the pin to show the alternate possible function. So drag and drop this one to PA9. Then you can release and you have changed the mapping for the user one ticks. Do the same for PB7, so you press the control button on your keyboard, keep it pressed, then left click on it, drag and drop to PA10. Now we are in line with the hardware configuration of my board. The user mapping for the GPIO are PA9 and PA10 for the user one. On this is done, I will now configure my RTC. So it will be in the category timer. And you can click on RTC. And the first thing is to say I activate the clock source. I will activate the calendar. And then I will activate timestamp functionality. And this is done, I have to specify that RTC is owned by the non-secure. This can be done thanks to this button. You need to go in the tab RTC security. Here for the moment, RTC is full secure. I have to disable this. So in the RTC tab, RTC full secure, disable. I need to have an interrupt. You remember when there is a timestamp, any EAQ should be generated. So in the NVIC settings, I have to add to enable the RTC non secure interrupt. Just click on enable. Less detail to avoid to have some warning when generated, we will activate the iCache. So in the system core category, you go in iCache, 
you assign it to non-secure for initialization and just select one way. And that's it. We have, I will say, configured all what is needed for our project. So let's generate the code. So click on generate code here. Now I will launch QID and open this generated project. So here I will close and I will now use cube ID. So please launch cube ID for you on your side also. And let's open the generated project. For this, I will go in a file, open project from file system. Here I will put the path of my hands on and I will go in the I will untick on zone and just keep timestamp event detection, timestamp event detection is non secure, and then click on finish. What is the structure of my project generated? As you can see, there is different things. The IOC, which corresponding to my CubeMX project, my non-secure project, so really my user application, but also the root provisioning folder with one folder with SM, which is a secure manager. So you've got the binaries, which is encrypt and sign of the secure manager on all what is needed to install it. You also have the DA, debug authentication folder with some associated script which allow to reopen the device or to control the debugging link. But we will have details in the dedicated part in this training. On here, we've got our application, non-secure. So first things, we can just try to compile it. So I will just select the project and press the hammer. Just to remark, you can see after compilation, there is some possible script that is launched. This one will conclude with TPC success. TPC stands for Trusted Package Creator, which is a tool which allows to handle all the encryption and signature generation of this binary. For the moment, we will use the debugger, so we don't use the version encrypted and signed, but we will use it when we do some secure firmware update. I would like also to show you with a build analyzer. So we just coming. Yes. Here automatically you can see the start address have been adapted to ensure that it has been compiled to the execution slot where the secure manager will launch this application. So now we are ready to add our code. To do so, first, we'll go in the material that you receive. Please, in the workshop on the material you receive, you should have a folder timestamp event detection. If you open this one, you find project patch files. Click on it. I've got a structures with include and source folder. In the source folder, you will see that you have different source and I would like you to drag and drop detection and trace. I take them from the folder and just drag and drop in the source folder. He asked me if I want to copy the file. Yes. This is a way to import some source inside your project. Then we will do something similar, I will say, with the include folder. So still in the project patch file, include. This time I would like you to drag and drop detection.h in the ink folder. And you copy the file. Now we'll modify the main.c and to avoid any mistyping issue, I will ask you to go in the type temp event detection in the material and here you've got the code to add.txt. You can open it and just copy past the code needed. So we have first to include the detection.h and then just in the user code picking to user code n2 we just do some printf so when the application is started we will have we will receive from the user these logs and then in the one while loop we will have the process event detection so take care where you put uh, this code 
it should be always after a user code begin. It's just to be kept um, regarding compilation. Oh, you can put it also there. The result should be the same. Then we saved and we can compile. So I will say we have done all the implementation for you and you can have a look in it. It's quite simple just to show what is behind. If I open detection.c, here you can find the timestamp callback with the flags to indicate that we have an event that have been detected. Here we get from the RTC register the timestamp, the date and the time. And in the one while loop, we just process event detection. If an event is detected, we just implement a function to send the traces over the user. Compilation is finished. So now we need to download our application to the target. And we can do this directly with Cube ID. On the project, I will right click on this, debug as STM32C C++ application. Then I have the pop-up for the configuration and you need to do one modification in the debugger tabs. Here you can see we've got by default a reset behavior connect under reset. This configuration can be used with a secure manager because you remember the boot scheme. First we get a first stage bootloader that executes a second stage bootloader, blah, blah, blah. So that means we started in secure. But now we've got all this part that is, I will say, closed because we are in chosen close. That means we cannot use connect under reset, but software system reset. So just do this modification and then you can launch the debugging. It will recompile everything. Debugger will connect. We switch automatically to Debug configuration. You can see the flash is ongoing. And finally, we stop in our program. That means I can debug it and go on. So we've got a secure manager that is installed in the secure part. And you can see that on your ID, there is no impact. I would say you can still download and debug your application. So you've got some security here with some security services available but I will say it's transparent for you. Now let's test our application. I will just resume it and I will open my TerraTerm. So launch TerraTerm, file, new connection. Here you should find the STLink COM port. So it's probably another number for you. Click on OK. Regarding the setup, and for the serial ports, you should be with such speed, so 115,200. The rest is correct by default. Okay, so this is ready. If I press the reset button, I can still see my timestamp event detection. And now, if I press the blue button, I have an event detected, and you can see that the time and the date changes. That is correct. Okay, that means we have finished to develop our application. Now let's close the debugging session. Just click on the red square here. This concludes this first part of application development. We have created the basic application in the Secure Manager context. Thanks integration of the boot pass in the STM32 CubeMX, all the needed adaptation of the memory mapping has been done for you. And then we are able to download and debug our application without any specific constraints in the IDE, except uh, you write the connect and the reset behaviors, but that's all. So it's somehow transparent for a developer just to deal with this application using CubeMX on its usual IDE. If we put this in perspective of the 12 securities function, we have in place now a secure boot, but also an isolation. Isolation between our application and all the security stuff that is handled by the secure manager. So in the next part, we will add some other function in our application. Thank you.